just got a letter stating that um, the state had taken it for back child support, which was support back before I ever even met my husband, which shouldn't have even had anything to do with my income. The old saying goes, two wrongs don't make a right. And Mrs. Tepner felt that her income tax refund shouldn't have been taken by the state to pay her husband's back child support owed to an ex-wife. So she told the IRS she wanted her refund back. After we had called income tax a dozen times and they stated that there wasn't anything they could do, this was the new law, that was it. Feeling frustrated, Mrs. Tepner wrote Contact 2 in April, explaining that her husband was disabled with a heart condition and going blind. And the family was in desperate need of the income tax refund, totaling just over $1,000. So we went to IRS to find out what the problem was. Uh, as a result of a uh, bill that was passed in October of 81, uh, the Internal Revenue Service now will offset uh, a taxpayer's refund, federal tax refund, if they have an outstanding uh, delinquent child support account with the state agency. It's impossible for us to discern, looking at one tax return, if it's a married couple filing jointly, which income is the husband's and which income is the wife's. It seems that the Tepner's joint return led to the holdup. So in fact, Mrs. Tepner was due her full refund. Additional information supplied to the IRS proved that the refund related only to money that she had earned herself. That refund plus interest came in the mail on Friday. I'm just going to graduate from nursing school in a couple of days, and this is going to come in handy for my new career. <laughs> Married couples who might run into problems like the Tepners should file their income tax returns as married filing separately so that husband and wife each get what they're entitled to or in some cases, not entitled to. And if bureaucracy is denying you something that you're entitled to, write me about it. Ed Hanrahan, Contact Two. Approximately 80 people were arrested in Prince George's County last month, including some doctors, lawyers, and police officers, all accused of not paying child support or alimony. And as word of the mass arrest spread, 60 other people voluntarily surrendered support payments to avoid going to jail. In Baltimore County, there will soon be similar mass arrest scenes. Deputy State's Attorney Howard Merker says individual arrests have not been effective enough. There is a tremendous amount of monies not being paid in Baltimore County uh, and, and all the counties in the state. Uh, we feel that what happened in Prince George's County was something unique. Uh, to Maryland and something that has had a lasting effect in Prince George's County. Merker says the state's attorney's office is now reviewing almost 400 outstanding warrants for non-payment of child support to determine which are still current. Once we have that information, we will then move by way of arrest uh, and seizure of them, placing them in jail and then having them come into court within the next day or so. Merker says many people have been forced onto welfare because estranged spouses have refused to provide child support. There are roughly 40% of Baltimore County's caseload is on welfare, and we are talking only about child support. We're not talking about spousal support. The threat of regular mass arrests may change all that. that this will be somewhat of an incentive to pay to stay out of jail, not to have somebody knocking at their door in the early morning hours, not to be an embarrassment. Merker says warning letters will go out in about two or three weeks. Those who don't respond with a payment can expect this a few weeks later. Jack Bowden, New Scene 2. Hey. And the judge granted the child support. What's, where, where is it? Where's my check? Paula Salisbury is one of an estimated 200,000 Marylanders, mostly mothers, who are supposed to be receiving regular child support payments from their former spouses and aren't. Like many women, Mrs. Salisbury took her problem to court. After a year's wait, a judge in Anne Arundel County slapped a lien on her husband's wages, but a month later, she still hasn't received a check. Mrs. Salisbury is better off than many. She has remarried, but the three children from her previous marriage are still a considerable financial burden. There's got to be other women that are working two jobs that have two and three children that aren't getting their support that can't make it. I don't see how, I don't see how you can take it inside. You wake up thinking about it. You fight. You fight with your children. You fight. My husband and I are getting into little arguments because I've changed. I'm different. Paula Salisbury's case is one of 8,400 handled each year by the Domestic Relations Office of the Anne Arundel County Government. 
The office tries to get child support payments made without going to trial. But in half the cases, those who are supposed to pay break their legal agreements. And there is often little the domestic relations people can do. A lot of people are getting divorced these days. A lot of people have paternity mm -hmm. cases. A lot of people have um, support problems. And you do the best you can with the people that you have available to you. But we don't have staff for one caseworker to follow around one delinquent parent and grab the money when he gets it in his hand. Anne Arundel County is actually more successful than most places in prodding spouses to pay child support. Anne Arundel County's success rate is 56%, while elsewhere in the state, the average is only 18%. This is Patrick McGrath on the scene in Annapolis.